Alright. This is real talk with Nick, y'all. One and only. My boy, KW, Harlem Finest. I even seen in the comments where they starting to call you all Harlem president. <laughs> God I'm damn! All, I'm all Harlem, but I don't know if I'll be president. Oh man! But listen, I'm, I'm glad that me here, me we here with real talk with Nick. We here to shoot the crap. We're gonna talk about some things, and uh, you know, we're gonna give the props to the Knicks for that road trip. All right. Very good on that road trip. Very good. Yeah. So the Knicks played better on the road trip than you expected. Right. I thought they would only get one game, and then I'm looking at the wrong. You know, I was looking at the wrong schedule. I thought they was playing the Lakers, the Clippers. They wasn't even playing them. They played Utah. I'm glad they beat them, and they beat Denver. Even though they was depleted, they beat them. And, you know, they beat uh, Oklahoma City, which I'm glad they revenged that loss, man. So I'm happy that they they, they doing good. They still 9-9. Nine nine. We still 0-0. Zero zero. Maybe we could get over 500, and I'm hoping that we do. And, like, you know, we at the 20-game mark. So, you know, I, I hope we, we, we are be, like, 11-9, something like that. But we're a couple of games over 500. December is brutal. Okay, now, I want to elaborate on the game with the Knicks versus the Thunder. Who you give props to, man? Who, who, who? Was it a team effort, or was there certain individuals give, on the I'm Knicks? I'm going to give that game to Jalen Brunson, man, because he played a hell of a game. Man. Uh, 34 points, 11 assists. He played a hell of a game. I mean, uh, you know, he stepped his game up. Give props to Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett. They both came and they played very well. Now, speaking of Julius Randle, man. I don't have nothing bad to say about Julius Randle. I, hey, listen, man. When Julius played bad, I'm not even going to say nothing when Julius played bad because that's the stretch of the way the NBA is. Overall, man, Julius is probably the most consistent basketball player on the Knicks. Man. I'm talking about he comes to play every night. And he rebounds. Now, he can't guard his man worth a damn, but... Know, in spite of all that, he do show up, and I'm gonna stop talking bad about it. So, do we kind of owe Julius Randle an apology? Julius, man, I'm, I apologize for getting in your ass, but I was just chasing you because I wanted you to do better, and you are. So it's not your fault that you you play for a stupid ass coach. Not your fault at all. Okay, okay, moving right along, man. Uh, Nick Avelli apologizes as well. Yeah, we because, just, uh, we you know, upset, we just want to win. We Nick fans. Yeah, and then we can't be putting it on Randall. You know, they put a lot of responsibility on Randall that he couldn't really do, like handling the ball and, and, and making bonehead passes and stuff. Now you got Jalen Brunson. You know, you seem to be a more – it looks like it works for you. You know, you getting the ball, you getting your spot, you're taking better shots, and you look like Julius Randall, the player that we want. You know, but unfortunately, we don't play good defense in the front court. Our now, guards man. get broke down and causes our, our interior guys, like our forwards and centers, to get in foul trouble. Now, that's a slap in the face, man, to have a somewhat called a defensive coach. Yeah, man. You know, and we don't play man. defense, man, the way we should, man. I mean, I play for a lot of defensive coaches. Listen, man, you got to want to play that. When a defensive coach see a guy like Deuce McBride, man, just, Deuce McBride should be playing for him. You know, don't put him back on the bench, man, because he done proved himself. And, uh, you know, he can't keep going through proving himself, proving himself. No, let him play, man, because y'all need him, man. Ain't like y'all don't need Deuce McBride. Y'all need Jericho Sims. Y'all need these guys I'm talking about that we know that can take us to the next level, and y'all not doing it. Y'all playing them like, like rookie minutes, and they not rookies, man. They are ready to play, man. They in their third and fourth year. They ready to play, man. So, you know, you better know, Thibodeau, you better figure it out. You know, it's not me and Nick's job to figure out your substitution rotations, man. It's not our job to do that, you know? Okay, okay. And when we speak of that of the coach, man, I mean, let's say the Knicks do go to the playoffs, right? Yes. Will that save the talk of Tom Libido being axed out? I'm going to say this. I've known coaches go to the second round and the next year be fired. So it's not like that's going to be a barometer. If the Knicks go deep into the playoffs... There'll be some redemption for Thibodeau, but you don't have that kind of team, man. You're going to have to make some trades and get your team to play to that level. Your team is not elite level. Y'all will not win playing against Boston, playing against Milwaukee, playing against Atlanta. Y'all not going to win. If Philly is back, y'all might not even beat them. You know? Oh, man, why you say that? Because they're back. They got their center and, they, and, and, and they're playing, man. You know, And the Knicks don't play no defense. 
Okay, if we want to measure the Knicks, let's measure the Knicks. Let's look at a team like Milwaukee. They'll hang around, but then they, they don't finish. They got to finish game. You're not going to finish. You can finish a game with a bunch of rookies. Okay, it's deceptive what they're doing. They, you know, they get one bad game, they get blown out, then they play against a, a bunch of sisters in the pool, and then you think that they're going to win. Y'all are 9-9. Nine and nine. Y'all should not be 9-9 nine and nine at this point. So what should we be at this point? Y'all should be about 12-6, and six, man. 12-6? and six. Yeah, y'all should be about that, man. So what teams do you feel at the Knicks? It was at least three or four games we had to lead and, ball and blew it. It was two of them that the coach subbed, took the players out that he should have left in. There's a bunch of games that, you know, I would say you got, i say seven or eight. The bonehead coach made bonehead moves. The other two, we just didn't play good as a team. Those nine losses. And don't get me wrong, those nine victories are good victories, but they're against mediocre teams. I want y'all to beat Milwaukee. When I start seeing y'all beat Boston, beat Milwaukee, beat Atlanta, beat Chicago, beat these teams that's going to be in the playoff hunt, then I know y'all ready. Right now, y'all not ready, man. Y'all beating these you know, these sisters of the board team. Oklahoma City, you supposed to beat them. They're not supposed to come in the garden and beat y'all like they beat y'all. That's not supposed to happen, not that team. And that's happening. And the inconsistency with the coaching, how, you know, you're not really bringing in the right players. You now, you now have a whole nother rotation and guys got to solidify that. You keep changing up the lineups, man. I don't know if people are going to buy into them roles, man. I, I, I don't know. I can't say. Okay. And when we speak of that, are Obi topping, man? I mean. Obi's lost right now. I told you that was going to happen. It was, if you ever look at our film, let's say your Obi's going to get lost. And he's going to be like, he you know, if they don't give him a consistent minutes, he's going to get lost. Because there'll be injuries. And then you start playing other guys like Jericho Sims start playing. Then you start playing Harleston. And that takes away from his minutes, especially given the fact that Randall is playing exceptionally well. That takes away from his minutes. And now he's not even getting 15 minutes. I think he's getting 8, 13 minutes. His minutes are being drastically reduced because of the production of the other players. So, and I knew that was going to happen. So. so why not just keep OB in the second unit? Let him thrive there. He puts him in the second unit, and then... For some reason, if Derrick Rose is not running that second unit, they go scatterbrain. And then he starts changing up the combinations and Obi gets lost in that. That's what I'm saying. Like like keep him in where there's no consistency with what he's doing. Like when when he like when, you know, like how he tried to do it, he tried to solidify ten people and then two of that ten didn't work out. And now he's rotating two and three guys in them two positions and it's fucking up everything. Okay, you got to let you to let Deuce and, 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 and Jericho in early, we would be driving now. I reckon it would be nine and nine if you let those two guys play. Deuce for defensive reasons and Jericho for defensive uh, under the boards and rebound. You supposed to utilize those guys like that. And you did. You got Cam now hurt because you got these guys that you need to be scoring. You got them playing defense, man. You got RJ playing defense. What the hell you got Cam? What the hell you got that boy? Deuce McBride for. He's the one you should be putting out there. And finally, when you wake up and say, okay, let me put Deuce on Shy Gate, Shao Gilchrist, Alexander, you, oh, you you made his game off. You do that to everybody. Put Deuce on him 10, 12 minutes a game, every game. And I guarantee you, he'll slow the game down and speed the game up for us, but slow the game down for them. Got to do that. Okay. So, so, so in your eyes, would you say that Deuce McBride is the best defensive player, man? He's the best man-to-man -man defender on the ball. I give it him and Derrick Rose. I have them two. Derrick Rose played good defense on the ball, too. That means guarding your man 92 feet. When he's dribbling the ball, you guard him. Not like how Fournier, Fournier played or Randall played. Once they whip-wop him, they stop, and then you can go right by him. You know, nah, Deuce McBride in your chest. He, he contests you all the way. And he'll block your shot. He contests you. He plays defense like how you're supposed to play defense. You don't play him enough, but, you know, that's how you're supposed to play. Okay, okay. And I know you were expressing the concern of Emmanuel quickly being traded. Can yeah. you uh, elaborate on why you feel that move might take place? Because they got to get a scoring three man. And with Cam out, you know, Cam is injury prone. They got to have a, you know, like a backup for that. RJ's not consistent at the three man. Okay. And they know that. 
So they got to get a score of three. I forgot the guy's name from Phoenix. You know, we're dreadlocked. Strong. Score two, good shooting. So, I mean, he would help, but what, what are we going to give up to get him? You know, but do um, you think it would be a good move? Do you think, think that would come back to haunt us? If we went, let a man you quickly go. I don't think you should trade Derrick Rose or Emmanuel quickly. I think you should get rid of Fournier or Brown. That's my opinion. A lot of people kicking me in the neck. Man, you mean Brown? Man, get rid of him, man. Okay, because Quigley is much more productive than him, and that's what it comes down to. You understand? And Quigley can play defense too. So you know, if Grimes is coming in shooting four for ten. And giving me eight points in 33 minutes and quickly shooting five for nine and giving me a 12 and 15 points in less time, then I got to go with quickly, man, because his minutes are more productive. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Cause you used to be an uh, NBA basketball player, right? Yeah. And I'm going to talk about the politics concerning basketball, right? Yeah. When a player is not happy on a team, is it possible that they – don't produce on purpose so they can get traded off. When a player's not happy on the team, more than likely he's not happy with the minutes. He's not happy with the guys he's playing with. You know, like sometimes you play with rookies that don't know how to play and you got to go out there and you got to watch them make mistakes and it makes the whole unit look bad. I know I, I played with two knuckleheads. But what that makes a player it makes a player say, you know what, I'm not going to give my all. Play, but it makes the player go selfish. Because the rookies don't have a grasp of the key the, of the team concept yet. There's a learning curve they got to go through, and they go through it by trial through fire. Unfortunately, we got to go through it with them, stupid motherfuckers, but you go through it with them. And it's bad. You know, you go through bad periods with niggas that don't know how to make the adjustment to the pro game. Okay, so now, when you look at the second unit, if Derrick Rose is not in there putting them in their position, that second unit is scatterbrained, man. Because quickly he ain't going to run the team. He's going to shoot. Okay? So you got to have a solid guy in there like Derrick Rose to settle them guys down. And once he started using them, the second unit started playing better. Okay? So, no, you got to keep Derrick Rose. You know, if you trade him, that's your season right there. You ain't going to have no backup for for, uh, for my man Jalen Brunson. You got to have a backup for him. Okay? And you, you, you know... You got Deuce McBride, you know. You believe in him enough, you know, like, hey. But, you know, y'all have retarded his development enough where I say let let Deuce come in, you know, with the cleanup minutes for now until the role change for next year. Because y'all done ruined his development. I believe Deuce McBride could be that backup to Jalen Brunson. But I wouldn't trust it with, with Derrick Rose. Yet. I got to I gotta go to the playoffs, man. I don't got time to be experimenting like that. Okay, okay. And, and and once again, when we speak of that of RJ, man, right. is he a disappointing to disappointing really, to you? He just didn't come in shape, man. You understand? That happens when you sign big money. You know, you know you get ready to get paid. You have a ride. You be like, yeah, I'm paid now. Yeah, I'll tell you something, RJ, you paid now. You won't be paid in the next four years. You keep playing the way you playing, dude. Mm. You got only a little bit amount of time to make that money until you know. Now you you will be twenty six years old when when you fucking looking for your next deal. You in your prime, my nigga. You better be ready to. You better take that game to the next level and get your ass on that fucking stationary bike and start motherfucking doing five minute, you know, four four uh, minute runs and one minute sprints. And you do that shit for thirty minutes till you get that fat off that baby cheesecake fat off your ass. <laughs> That's real. But you got to get in shape, man. And I need you. And listen, RJ play good. So he's starting to come out his fault. consistent, man. You know, like, yo, we, we expect a lot from RJ. I expect a lot from RJ. But what do you say to those who say that RJ always have a slow start when we speak of the season, man? Like, this hey, well, is nothing listen, new. You know, I bet you any of my money, when he gave him all that money, he wouldn't have had a slow start. I bet you any of my money, they wouldn't have gave him that money, he wouldn't have had a slow start. I bet you he would have been like, man, by February, they better sign me. I bet you that. And he would have been playing. Your mindset is how you approach this. You gave him all that money. He like, shit, I'm paid now. You see coming in with cheesecake on his breath. He in there ain't running hard. You see what he's doing now, nigga? We, we, we mad. Nigga, we me and you, nigga. Look what the fuck going on with RJ. Can't play nobody. You know, you got him playing guard. You know, like I thought it was you putting him out of position. This boy ain't in shape. He ain't in shape, man. 
You know what I'm saying? It's easy to stand around and shoot jumpers, but you got to play the whole game. And, you know, RJ don't play the whole game, especially when he – listen, Donovan Mitchell's coming here December 4th. Hey, RJ, I'm measuring you on that one because that boy tore your ass up that, that, that game, man, in Cleveland. Man. You better make up for that one. You don't. You let Donovan Mitchell get 38 on your ass. I'm not even gonna be talking about you. The name just gonna be Jr. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Stand up, nigga. You better not let that nigga bust your ass. I'm thinking you better take some sort of pride that I got to bust this nigga ass December 4th, and that's not far from now, RJ. So I'm gonna be watching that. You better bust his ass. I mean, because you you made me real mad that last game. I don't know if you don't know. You better jump and block his shot, man. When niggas shoot a jumper, jump and block it. Y'all with this hand up shit and not moving. What y'all think? Y'all gonna get you know, the hand in his eye? No, block the ball. Man. That's Y'all don't know what kind of defense the Knicks be playing, man. I really don't. I call it no defense. That's what, that's that's what, what you call it, no, no defense. defense. Yeah, that's the kind of defense. And, 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 and Hardesteen, man. Oh, God. Listen, you know, like, I'm going to stop being hard on Hardesteen. He be trying, man. He just can't jump, man. You know, like, he can't guard. You know, like most big men, the best big man I've seen guard in the front court was Maurice Luke. He could guard you like a guard, and Anthony Mason. Most big men can't play guard, you know, guard, play defense like a guard, and, and Hardleston is one of them. You get Hardleston from the free throw line, extend it out, and you can drive him right to the basket and give him a head fake on your way, he'll, he'll, he'll fuck him up all the way to the back. All you got to do is dribble head fake Hardleston, dribble head fake him, and, and Hardleston is all up in the air so fucking weird. And you laying the ball up. I've seen it done. Hey, so. Now, if you going at Hardleston and he's standing there like a giraffe, yeah, he's going to block that because you takes and he's shooting right into his arm, you know. But if you get him, you know, on the outside, he just plays terrible defense. You know, and it shows. I mean, it's not like, yo, you know, it's enough videotape to see. I'm not being hard. You know, he's a great scorer. Nice touch, lefty. You know, but he's a finesse center, man. And in the in the East, I need a power center. I need a Mitchie Robinson. Man. I need him. Man. Yeah, man, speaking I'm of Mitch, man. Mitch ain't here, but Mitch going to be back. And Mitch, man, you got to get back in shape, man. You got to do some... Oh like, man, uh, you saying uh, you, you saying Mitch ain't in the shape too, yo? Yeah, Mitch was bent over. Listen, I'm a basketball player. When you see a guy bent over like this, Nick, he's tired. He just kept got in the game. He ran up a couple of times. Now he ain't been playing, I understand. But yo, man, you gotta get your cardio back. Man. You know, they threw him a nice pass, he dunked it. You know, the C was tired, man. You gotta get in shape, man. So I know, I know. I'm so okay, player. all right. All right. Speaking of your credentials, you was a ball player in the NBA. When you are out due to injury, how many games? They used to put on a on a on a fifteen day or five game disabled list. Okay. Okay. But so how many out. games miss can get you out of loop? When 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 your I cardio when, when we when I was on the disabled list, they had me on the side backs and the bike. When I came back, I didn't lose nothing. I was not able to come back and because I was you know I had a good trainer. Frank Furtado was a great trainer. You know, you got trainers that know how to do that while you hurt, man. You know, you got trainers like Frank Furtado. Guy come to your house. Come on, Kevin. You you hurt, man. You don't, you know, Frank Furtado used to come get me and then put me on that side back. You know, the, 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 the therapy you have to go through to get yourself back and get you keep you in shape. You just got to have good trainers, man. And then, like, with Frank, man, there ain't no, you know, Frank was such a nice man. You, you want to do what he asked you. Got some people like that. You know, I hope he's all right, Frank. Man. Rest in peace, man. You know, Frank Furtado was a good man. Yeah, yeah. So other than that, once Mitch get back into his condition, Mitch should be back. Mitch should be all right. He got to get a stretch of games. And yo, man, you got we got to put a defensive crew out there. You know, like when I play with good coaches, they got a crew that plays defense. All right, I'm gonna put the stoppers in the game. You put the records in there. You go with Jericho, you go with Obi, you go with motherfucking Julius at the three, you put motherfucking Cam at the two, and you put RJ at the one or Jalen at the one or Derek Rose at the one. Nigga, this the wrecking crew. I'm going to wreck these niggas, and I'm going to let them play until they get tired, and then I'm going to rotate my other guys in. 
You know, but I'm going to wreck them with that crew. Okay? And it should not matter. You know, like Jalen Brunson wrecked them niggas, man. He, that's how you supposed to wreck them, nigga. You wreck, now, you wreck Philly and, and, and Milwaukee like that. You wreck them niggas. Because when I see you wreck them niggas, I'm going to stop talking bad about them. Okay. Well. All right. All right. And that's what it is, man, with the OG. It. I'm Harlem born. Uh-oh. I'm Harlem strong. I'm Harlem all motherfucking day long. Harlem forever, baby. That's the that's OG right. stepping on, baby. That's right. Shit.